the Lord bless you in Jesus name the week beginning becomes for you a week of miracles signs and wonders in the name of Jesus everything you lay your hands to do will prosper the Lord will lift you above your enemies you will see his faithfulness at work in your life I call your week blessed in Jesus name we pray have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries at different churches have you seen the commotion that happens there during things like fasting and prayer or or maybe Christmas or New Year or something everyone comes with his perspective why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes somebody said because Jesus died for me he didn't die to make me suffer and the other person is saying oh you oh boy who taught you this and the other person is saying continue the day there's no food to eat it my doctrine will make sense and this other person is now speaking and saying you guys are not pressing into the things of God you you are religious you you are carnal we are spiritual we are always walking with angels there is fasting and prayer are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon there is global evangelization souls must be won you are talking about clothes and all this confusion are happening in the same house the Bible calls it a great house but in a great house there are what not only vessels there are there are many they are all vessels but the Bible says there are many vessels and God did not hide it from us he said some are unto honor but some vessels although they are vessels the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor he said they are vessels of clay it starts from there the first vessel is what clay vessels but clay something made them that way they have refused to transit they believe that that clay is gold and that is their conviction but the bible says there are vessels of wood they have moved from that realm of clay to being wood when fire comes it can burn them and they can become ashes but at least they are vessels of wood and then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same. It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. He was talking about people in the same fold but he said five were wise so it's possible to be a foolish virgin five were wise and the other five were what foolish what was the wisdom five took extra oil the other five were complacent with what they knew they didn't press for more and a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies... It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. 
Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord. Oh. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, come down. Ah! Come down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, how are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way there are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books that try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it and truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it and entered something else there are others who read it and nothing happened lift your hands and say lord reveal the truth to me please say it lord reveal the truth to me jesus said it this way i am the way not any prophet not any apostle not any teacher not any pastor i am the way you follow men you will follow a lot of things are you hearing what i'm saying if all you want to do in your life is to follow apostle joshua selma you are going to be in big trouble i am the way i am the truth in fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone be true. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again. Again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders, multiplied people and all of that, Jesus is being glorified in that ministry. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. There is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life. No matter how nice it sounds. There is something you can hear no matter how ugly it sounds. It will make you a wonder in life. There is something you will hear that will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says, be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said, there is a way. There is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true hallelujah we believe we are so convinced we've argued it that this is the truth acts please acts chapter 18 acts chapter 18 let's read from verse 15 let me show you something a very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18.
The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty. Meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you... For many of us who have read the book of Ephesians. You know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit. According to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence and his spiritual argument, as powerful as they were, they were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got A1 in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now one day he was in a meeting just like koinonia that's why you see brothers and sisters is part of the reason why i prepare and pray and fast because i realize that when i stand on this stage it's a privileged position not everybody is daft spiritually pastors never forget this when you stand there are times you are speaking and somebody is just looking. This is the situation. The guy had been called a great man. Like we men of God are. We just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great, great, great one. So according to that perspective, I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. He says, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church. When he was there to shine as usual, on that fateful day, there were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla. And they kept quiet. Worship team sang. And the guy who was suit, he came up. And he began to speak. When Aquila and Priscilla had, they said, wow, this guy has great potentials, but there is so much you do not know. How do you feel when someone tells you that? Embarrassing, right? If you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says when they had, what happened? They took him like a boy. Ha, ah, amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache got healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. 
And while he was talking, you see the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God. More. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses. Areas of excesses. Areas where his eye had not seen. When they took him, what happened? They expounded. They said, all right, there is the baptism of John. But did you know that Pentecost happened? The guy said, no. The person who taught me did not teach me that. Probably the person who taught him, taught him as Alpha. Maybe he was one of the scribes. The scribes are the suspects in this teaching. Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody is saying your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people who are. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that you were taught about spiritual growth but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom. And that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience. And if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension, you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete. What if you were taught that it is just all about success? and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone are you hearing me that there are times that if need be you may have to die for your convictions if you open your heart to that dimension then you can enjoy the blessings of God. Buy all the flashy cars, buy great houses, but they never take your place because you know that you are a bond servant. Your Christian experience becomes more perfect. Are you getting me? What if you have been taught that the only devil you have is the devil in your mind? There is no real devil anywhere. There are no demons anywhere. Is that true? What if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith? And all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness, rulers, spiritual wickedness, and you embrace the perspective. You become a prosperous, committed, strong, and vibrant Christian. 
it makes your Christian experience richer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it is for this cause, Ephesians chapter 4, please, verse 10. It is on account of this completion. Listen, please. That he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens. Verse 10, verse 11. And he gave some what? Apostles. And some. And some. And some. And some. Perspectives. He gave unto them. He engraced his body with gifts. Listen to me. Revealed perspectives to them. There are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church. They can host a convention. They can lift wheelchairs. But they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? The ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them a equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there if you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up there are people like that there are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life just locate them you're not going to hear any revelation i traveled somewhere and while I was there, it was, it was a, a, a conference. And there were lots of prophets there. Hallelujah. And I was amazed to see how these guys, their understanding of the word was so little. You know how an ostrich is so big, but the brain is so tiny. Not, it's not an insult. I'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was. But my goodness my goodness these people these people zeroed down the prophetic it was almost prophecy but at will i've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people but i'm not called into the prophetic office the grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you so for me i know that to prophesy it must happen with fasting and prayer it's not a gift for me. I don't look at you now and say, except I'm lying. You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say, you, there are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever... The prophetic gift must be activated in me is on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave on to some teachers so that the, the full picture, verse 12, why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints, comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry. To the end that verse 13 till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure 
of the statue. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh, oh God of Joshua Selman, arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that, there's, there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care, that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again, at the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe Dunamis TV, the people don't listen. Let me go on this, let me go on that any television station they throw you away correct gospel but you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you is that true what perspective about god have you rejected bless you what perspective about the truth of god's word have you rejected there are people today for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings? Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? There are people who will never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya, say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe Samadeh of his message. Say, please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access. There are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. 
Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago and it was so much. You know, then, now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> For me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, oh, stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I will not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen. If you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries. They cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment, there are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benue. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing and get blessed. Billy Graham, it was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was, no, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And there were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God. Don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so 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 person's thing. Throw it away. And you have done so to your own detriment. 
if it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas, there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called Honesty, Morality, and Conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me to the apostolic ministry and he gave me the dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality, see, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen. The way we were trained, huh? hear me. If I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. Yes. It doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me. And you will ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is. It, it has died. We were taught that if you buy. Maybe. Chinching or puff puff or something on the street. No matter how hungry you are. Even if you are dying. You must find the nearest place. Enclosed place. And sit down with dignity. And eat like a human being. Not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive. They did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters. Part of these virtues. Are you getting me? Is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so 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 time, I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non Christian, we have to learn it. And then the man, that was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Act 16, they know you have not been. You have not been following because if you are following we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed and your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month that we, this memory you see is not just that okay the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it but if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof, and I'm the one responsible for the food. You must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. 
Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? For now. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And they said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters. It was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darling Jack. As we are busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not, you go home, straight there, you are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call, you know how the Bible says it, rebuke one, then call another, L. you are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to, anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this, no. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes.